Thanks for waking up with us. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to Stand Focus for Jesus. Hope each and every one of you are having a blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ. Today is October 20th, 2021. October 20th, 2021. Um, does the Bible say nigger? Does the Bible actually say nigger? You will be surprised some of the stuff the Bible says. And people don't know a lot of these things are in the Bible because they're not being told these things. And the reason that they're not being told these things, but they're being taught something else is simply because they don't want the people to know. Because when you start to really see the things that are in the Bible, it makes you ask more questions. And for those of us who are true believers, who do we go and ask? We go and ask God. We go and ask our Father. And then he gives us more revelation, more knowledge, more wisdom, and more understanding. So when you read the scriptures, you see that it's specifically calling him Niger. Kind of like giving it away, but we get to it. Niger, you're like, oh, okay. Because we know what Niger means. We know the root of it and everything. But when you actually see what it really says, you're like, whoa. So they were saying it way back then. You see, they told us what? That the white man, he came up with the term nigger and all these other things, which is simply not the truth. He took that term and then he applied it in a derogatory way. Like, hey, it's bad. It's it's a curse for you if you are if you are black. So we're going to call you nigger, you nigger this and nigger that. But that term was already around. I'm going to prove it to you from the actual scriptures. Like I said, they play a lot of games and everything. But that's why you have to have the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that's, that's why we talk about being led by the Spirit. Because the Spirit is going to give you the revelation. And you have to look at it from the lens, as they say, of God. From the lens of Christ, from the lens of the Holy Spirit, when you're reading the Bible. From the lens of a Hebrew. Even if you're not a Hebrew, you can still look at it through the lens of a Hebrew. May say, well, how can a person do that if not a physical Hebrew? Because they are a Jew inwardly and they have the spirit. Come on, y'all. And you're telling me that a white person can't relate to or understand the struggles that a black person may go through? Rather they're going through or not going through it? There are white people that go through the struggle. They have went through the struggle just as much as, the, as black people. So you tell me they can't relate because, oh, you're black, so I can't relate to what you're you're going through. I can't have no empathy. That's foolish. That's foolish. It's foolish to even, even say something like that. So, <clears throat> y'all hold on a second. My wife bringing my tea in. We're going to keep on rolling. We ain't going to pause it. Oh, yeah. That's good. Fresh ginger. Oh, yeah. Um... So, yeah, they told us that this term comes from the white man and everything, which is simply not true. The Bible has a whole bunch of interesting terms and language in there. A whole bunch of stuff that gives us a better understanding of what was going on. So, like I said, <clears throat> you want to look at the and understand the Bible and read the Bible and comprehend the Bible from those different perspectives. Also, many different perspectives at one time because i can read the bible from the perspective of a father i can read the bible from the perspective of a student or a teacher or a soldier a jew of the flesh or even as my gentile brothers and sisters and get an understanding i can read it from all those different perspectives and then some because of the spirit 
So when you see me speaking, you see me speaking. When I speak and I make a statement, I try to form that statement where anybody can relate to it. Any anybody can relate to the statement that I'm that I'm making, and it can it can speak to them. So before we get to what I really want to get to, we're gonna read Acts chapter eleven. <laughs> Let me hear my children, my, my youngest. Acts chapter twelve, and then we're gonna read Acts thirteen, and we're gonna read verse number one in Acts thirteen, which is the verse that we are gonna be mostly discussing. But I want you to get the whole context of what's going on. So let's go ahead and get into it. <clears throat> And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. So the Jews were contending with Peter about what? Saying, thou wentest into men uncircumcised and didst eat with them. So they're trying to accuse him the same way they accused Jesus. Hey, you are eating with the unclean. You're eating with uncircumcised. You're eating with Gentiles. We don't do that. This is what they're trying to accuse him of. Then it says, but Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them saying. So if he's talking about, as some people try to make, make the claim that this is lost Jews, then it wouldn't have been a problem if they were eating with them. It wouldn't have been a problem. It's not talking about lost Jews who were considered Gentile. It's talking about physical Gentiles of the flesh. Physical Gentiles of the flesh. That's who we're talking about. It's the same accusation they try to bring against Christ. <clears throat> but Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, a certain vessel to sin, as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me upon the which which upon the which when I fastened my eyes, I considered and I saw four footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. So he's seeing all these different creatures that are on this great sheet. He's like, OK, what's going on? And I heard a voice saying unto me, arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, not so, Lord. So he's telling God. I'm not eating that because according to the law, I don't eat these different, these different creatures. He said for nothing common or what unclean have that any time entered into my mouth. I'm going to give you a great, it's not really a great revelation, great mystery, but you know, you speak the terms because it gets people's attention. This great mystery, great revelation. So for some people it is going to be great. Now give me a second. Let me sip on this tea. The whole thing about, eating the unclean animals. Do you know what that was symbolic of? It was symbolic of Gentiles. The Gentiles were considered the unclean animals. So in the Old Testament, God told them that they could not eat those unclean animals that symbolized the Gentiles. Hey, you can't eat with them. So that's why when Jesus was eating with the Gentiles, <laughs> They were like, hey, you're eating with the unclean. And God is going to show us that. If you go back to the book of Genesis, you see the progression of what Adam and Eve could and couldn't eat. You don't give a child, you don't give a baby solid food when they're first born. You let them grow into it. As I told you many times, Adam and Eve, they were immortal but they were not gods they were not gods they didn't have the knowledge of good and evil being able to decide between good and evil they only knew good this is why later christ says that when you eat something if you cannot eat it in faith then it is unclean so people arguing about eating this and eating that, and I give you I give you this example. Most of your food, especially the chicken, is what? Is GMO. They're doing things to make the chicken grow faster. We know this. So you're telling me that 
Chicken is a clean animal according to the word of God. Pig would be unclean according to the word of God. Right? According to the Old Testament law, right? So you're telling me a GMO chicken that's pumped full of steroids and all these other things is more clean than a pig that has not been uh, altered or whatever. That's what you're telling me. The chicken is clean because hey, the chicken is clean, but they've modified it. But the pig is unclean because it's unclean, but it's but it hasn't been messed with it as much as the chicken. You're not making any sense. Most of the food that y'all are eating is GMO because y'all don't want to spend the money on the good stuff. And then you talk about that you're eating healthy and you're eating clean, but you still wild as all out those and can't lose no weight, and you wonder why. You drink sugar like crack because the modern day sugar, the white table sugar, it is a form of crack because it has the same effects. It's addictive. Your flesh is addicted to it. You ever wonder why you get these intense sugar cravings? That's a addiction, just like a drug because they made it into a drug by altering it and stripping, stripping it of its nutrients and making it more concentrated. But you're telling me, yeah, yeah, you eat healthy, eat clean and everything. And you got people telling you not to eat sugar, this and that, this and that. No, bad sugar is bad. Your DNA is sugar-based. You need sugar. The sugar crystallizes and helps it bind. So again, but I said, not so, Lord, for nothing common or clean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, what God hath cleansed that call not thou common. And this was done three times and all were drawn up again into heaven. So this happened three times, three different witnesses so that Peter could get it that, hey, these are unclean animals. And I have cleansed them. Yeah, they were unclean, but guess what? I've cleansed them, Peter, and I'm God. So if I said they were unclean, and now I'm telling you, hey, they're clean by the sanctification of your, of your prayer because you have the spirit of Christ in you, then they are clean. If I'm saying that the Gentiles are unclean, they're uncircumcised, and now I'm saying they are circumcised in the heart, not with the letter, but the spirit, and that you can eat with them because they are clean in heart, and they have received and believed, then they are clean because I, the Lord, have made them clean, and who is above me? And behold, immediately there were three men already come unto the house where I was sent from Caesarea, Caesarea unto me. And the spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send me to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname Surname is Peter. You notice you always had these surnames in the Bible? Just like Scotland, Ireland, these different places, they, they have surnames. <laughs> it's a connection between that. Who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved? Saved by what? By the words, the gospel. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning then what then remember i the word of the lord how that he said john indeed baptized with water since y'all say that water baptism saves you but ye shall be baptized with the holy ghost they hadn't been, they haven't they hadn't even been water baptized and the holy ghost fell on them the holy ghost is what seals you the holy ghost is what seals you because he remembered like oh this is what Christ was talking about. That they were going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. So John baptizing with water 
was a symbolization, was symbolic of Christ baptizing with the Holy Ghost, which is why he said rivers of flowing water would flow from your belly, from your inside. For as much then as God gave them the light gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? So he's separating the two. He said, he gave, gave them, the Gentiles, the light gift as he did us, the Jews. And then he says, who am I? Who am I in comparison to God? That I can withstand God and what God is doing and what God wants wants to do according to his will, his purpose. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. See, repentance is a gift that comes from God. So it's a gift. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix, Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of the men, and some of them, and some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, to speak unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed in turn unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came into the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. So it's spreading and they're finding out what's going on. They're like, hey, man, the Gentiles, they're getting saved. They're coming to salvation. They're preaching and the Holy Ghost is coming upon them. And they're doing some of the same stuff that we was doing when we had got anointed with the Holy Ghost in the upper room. So we jump over here to verse 23 and it says, who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Sarsus for to seek Saul. So he's like, hey, I got to go find Saul. I got to go find Paul. He got to hear about this. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. He said, hey, you heard what's going on? Like, what's going on, brother? Man, the dang Gentiles, they getting saved. Remember when the word spoke about this and spoke about that? You got to see this. This is crazy. So, and it came to pass that a whole year, they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. Now, who's teaching the people? The leaders. Who are the leaders? The Jews. Barnabas, Tarsus, um, and some of the others that are mentioned. So they all assembled in Antioch. Barnabas didn't heard what's going on. He didn't went and got Saul. They didn't, they didn't you know, came all the way to Antioch with the other believers and everything. And they teaching people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So what y'all talking about? What y'all talking about? And then he even tells you in verse 27, and in, and in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. So, it was, people were hearing what was going on in Antioch, and they were like, man, I want to get some of that. The church is assembled, and they learning things. Let me go on over here and see what's going on. So when y'all talk about the Council of Nicaea and everything, y'all are liars. You're liars. This says, the word says, the very word you say you believe, says that they were first called Christians in Antioch amongst believers. Because you had Jews and Gentiles there. And so they needed a term based on, on wisdom that could apply to both Jews and Gentiles without causing confusion. And y'all niggas want to uh, call cause confusion talking about something that you shouldn't call yourself a Christian. Because of the bad apples. That showed me you don't believe the word of God because God already told you that people would come from amongst us and lead away uh, people into false doctrine. So I'm not going to call myself a black man because a black, a term black man has gotten a bad rap in these last days. In general, it's almost a curse to be black. 
because how people look at you. So I'm not going to consider myself black, even though there's no such thing as what we call a black race, because we know that black is a descriptive term. But no, I'm not going to call myself that because, hey, I'm a coward. Stop it. Y'all got the right one now. Don't play with us. We do this. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the spirit that there should be a great dirt throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. So not everybody was being persecuted. You had people that was in Judea. They were being persecuted, but they was over here in Antioch because they got out of there. So they, so they wouldn't be, really be persecuted like that. They flee. Ain't nothing wrong with fleeing when it's time to flee. Unless the Lord puts in your heart, hey, you got to stay here and you got to do this. And then, you know, you're killed for your faith or whatever. But you see, look, okay, we're going to send this relief that we, that we got according to his ability. What you can give and what you can give. Just, that's why I say that. If you can give it, give it. Because you're going to get it back and you're going to get it back twofold, threefold, fourfold. Y'all see, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, put, I'm putting in the work, my labor of love. So you're making an investment. When you share the videos, that's an investment. And you get a return on that. When you watch the videos and you speak the things that are in the videos and you go make your own videos or whatever, or write your books or whatever you do, however you use it, that's an investment. You get a return off of that. If you are giving financially or whatnot, you're giving it from the heart. It's not about the money. The money is just symbolic of, of a way for you to, to give from your heart. That's an investment. And so however I use that money, those resources, I like to call it resources, then you get a return on your investment, which is why he says store up your riches in heaven. That You may not see that investment immediately. You may see it later physically in his life but ultimately you're going to see it when it comes time when christ comes to get us, when we are ruling and reigning with him when you go to the judgment seat of christ and you get your rewards you can be like oh i didn't know what i did that well remember you shared that video so and so watched it or remember you prayed or whatnot and then brother king made that video and then it got a thousand views or it got so many views or whatever Use a part of that. Or remember you sold into the ministry? That's the proper understanding of into a ministry. Not what people try to do is they try to subtract the money from the gospel in the sense of, okay, I'm going to give this money, but I'm going to subtract the gospel. And they end up putting the money over the gospel. No. I'm going to give this money because I want the gospel to be spread. I'm going to give this money because I know some of the things, some of the things that Brother King is trying to do, and his track record speaks for itself. I'm going to give this prayer because of his track record and I, my, my, my labor of love. I'm going to share this video because of the gospel. You see what I'm saying? doesn't matter if it's, if it's money, if it's prayer, if it's uh, 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 a talk on the phone sharing a video, a post, it doesn't matter what it is. It has to be centered in the gospel of Christ. When it's not, that's when it becomes an issue. That's when it's vanity. Because now, if you give the money, then you're like, well, I expect him to preach on this, or I expect him, I'm demanding, I'm demanding him to do this or do that. And then you come and say, well, I gave you this and I gave you that. Well, what was the real reason you gave it then? So you could try to control me? You see what I'm saying? That's why people give to ministries that when they have itching ears. You see these big ministries and people give, 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 give. But the ones who are legit, only a small group of people give because they don't want to see us successful. The reason they don't want to see us successful in that aspect is because we're going to glorify Christ that much more. And they don't truly represent Christ. Now, they try to get in later and jump on the bandwagon and everything. But we see them for who they really are. Just like Christ saw who Judas Iscariot is. We know who the Judas Iscariots 
are around us. If you don't know, then hey, you, need, you better figure it out fast. Why do you think I say those things? Like, yeah, I see y'all. I know who you are on my Facebook page. Some of you I, I may even talk to, and I really know who you are. You're not getting over on me. You're only shooting yourself in the foot. We at war, baby. <laughs> we at war. Know thy, know thyself, know thy enemy. <laughs> when you know yourself, you will know your enemy. So it goes on and says, um, which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. You know, Barnabas and Saul, they was cool even though they got into their, their spats, their arguments and stuff like that. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Now notice, this is so true today. The Jews, the physical Jews, it pleased them to see their own brother of the flesh killed. <laughs> today it pleases the physical Jews it pleases black people when their brother or sister of the flesh doesn't make it your own people don't want to see you make it they don't want to do business with you like that they don't want to see you be successful they want to see you persecute they want to see you fail living in why you think that we can't never get together and do business but we spend all this money we know the power of the black dollar and y'all talk about coming together is not going to happen the way y'all talking about it coming together and happening is not going to happen now it can happen on a small scale because i got a team around me and i'm around them that's on a small scale. Collectively, remember we talk about microcosm and macrocosm, right? Collectively, we will all come together as a nation when Christ does it. But other than that, it's not going to happen. Now, you can go try to start your own Black Wall Street, all these other things. It's not going to last because most people are not who they say they are. So the scriptures tell us that unless the Lord builds the house they watch and they build in vain because it's going to fall so and when he had and when he had apprehended him he put him in prison and delivered him to four court 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 courtians courtornians probably pronounced that wrong never pronounced at least not on um camera <laughs> of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to Easter around the same time as the days of unleavened bread. And that's where a lot of confusion comes in there. Today. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. You see that? The prayer, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. So it was like, it was like Peter was in maximum security. You seen the movies where they got him in maximum security or whatever. And you like, man, ain't no way they can get out of this boy. Ain't no way boy boy. Ain't no way boy inside joke for those who know. <laughs> so he was sleeping between two soldiers. He had two soldiers on either side, either side of him. And he had two chains on him, two chains. And some of my keepers at the door. There was more. It said the keepers. So there was multiple people at the door. That's maximum security right there, y'all. That make a good movie right there. Oh, Lord. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> I start shooting my movies. And behold, the angel of the Lord came, and came upon him. And a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly in his chains fell off from his hands so he pop, 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 pop. get up get up get up wake up peter let's go get out of here <laughs> and the angel said unto him gird thyself and bind on thy sandals he said get your clothes on so they really had him in like 
some type of Guantanamo Bay type of situation. He had no clothes on. All he probably had on was his drawers if he had on that. He had no, he had no shoes on his feet. And so he did. And he said unto him, cast thy garments about thee and follow me. He's like, hurry up, put your clothes on. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. So he didn't know that it was really, this was literally happening. Even though visions, there's something, a lot of times visions are something that's literally happening. It just hasn't happened yet, or it could be something that has already happened. And the Lord is allow you, allowing you to see it from that perspective of your understanding. Did you, did you hear that? From the perspective of your understanding. When they were past the first and the second war, so there was different like doors, like, eh, eh, you know how you got in the prison, you got the different doors and everything. So there were different areas they had to go through to get through that had guards and everything on them. This, man, this is crazy right here. You really think about it. This would make a good movie. Like you do a modern day version of it. And Peter doing a prison break. Said they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. So he delivered him from Herod and he delivered him from his own people who were going to deliver him up to be killed. But it wasn't Peter's time. It wasn't, it wasn't Peter's time because the Lord still needed him to do some other things. So when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose what, whose surname, the surname again was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. So they praying for Peter and here come Peter showing up. <laughs> And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda, which is interesting. You know, my wife's name is Rhodesia. <laughs> and when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. So she said, oh, it's Peter. But she didn't open the gate. She like, oh, it's Peter. It's Peter. Yeah, I, I know it's you. Peter out there like, hey, open the gate. Open the gate, sis. But instead of her opening the gate, she ran, she ran in there <laughs> to the other ones. <laughs> she forgot. <laughs> she forgot. And they said to her, that are mad. Like, Go sit down, woman. You know, the women say things a lot of times. The men, they put the women aside. That's why, you know, you got to listen to the women sometimes. You ain't going to listen to them all the time. You know, they say some crazy stuff. But a lot of times the women, they say something good if you listen. You know. Um, but she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said that it is his angel. It is what? His angel. So Peter has an angel? Or, or is Peter his own angel? You tell me. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. So, boom, 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 boom. Hey, y'all, come on now. It's me. It's not my angel. It's me, y'all. <laughs> Let me in. So they, oh, it is you. <laughs> But he, beckoning unto them with a hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. So he's like, calm down, calm down, be quiet, be quiet. You know, I just I just escaped. Let me tell y'all what happened. Be quiet. I'm going to tell y'all everything that happened. And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another another place. So I believe he was like, kind of like, he was like hiding. I believe Peter was like ducked off because Peter was probably thinking like, shoot. They gonna come looking for me, so I need I need to I need to be ducked off. Cause you know how Peter was. Peter was like streets. Peter was from the streets, from the hood. That's how Peter, you know, they acted. You could tell. That's why you know, um, Peter would make a good movie. He would make a good movie. His character would make a good movie, especially in a, like a modern day setting and everything. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stirring among the soldiers. What was become of Peter? And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea in their abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him and having made blasts of the king's chamberlain, their friend, 
desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. So Herod is he Herod is 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 on a rampage. He on a rampage because this is this is this is a embarrassment to him. He mad at everybody. He didn't have the people killed. He would probably have the whole country killed if he could have. Then it goes on and says, And upon a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon a throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. And we know what happens to him. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not glory. He, he gave not God the glory. And he was eating the worms and gave up the ghost. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that being being in a movie where Herod is is giving, you know, he's sitting there, he's giving his oration, speaking to the people, talking about how mighty he is, and you know, oh, it's the voice of a God, it's the voice of a God. He's like, yeah, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. He was, you could say, a God, but he didn't give glory to the God. And can you imagine in a movie where he, he literally drops dead and then his body turns to worms and the worms are eating him? Can you imagine a movie scene like that? That would be crazy. That would be crazy. Then it said, but the word of God grew and multiplied. Why? Because they understood what, what, what this, they understood what this was, they understood what this was about. <laughs> I know how I get sometimes. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Now we go to um, Acts chapter 13. We're going to read verse number one. But I want to read all this so you can get the context of where they, are, where they were at and the people who were in that area. So this is mostly black people that we're dealing with, right? See the Gentiles and everything? They around too. There, there's always been Gentiles around Israel. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch, which is why I want to read the previous scriptures, certain prophets and teachers. We know who the original prophets and everything are, right? As Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manaean, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, Tetrarch and Saul. So these people, they sat under Herod. So when this happened to Herod, some of them, they converted, which is why he said, but the word of God grew and multiplied. So some of them deflected from Herod after he died and seen it as an opportunity to get out. And they came over to the army of the Lord. And some of the people, what they learned under Saul, they learned under Saul, which means we know they knew the law. Most likely you could say that they were uh, physical Jews, obviously. Because we know how Saul was. Saul wasn't fooling with the Gentiles um, back then. So why would he allow people that was Gentiles to be around him? Why would he allow the Gentiles to be around him when he wasn't fooling with the Gentiles back then? That's why he ended up becoming the apostle to the Gentiles. Because he was more zealous than anybody. So this is our key that we're focusing on for the whole sermon but also right now Simeon that was called Niger Simeon that was called Niger now let me go ahead and explain it to you why are they specifically calling him Niger when we know we have other black people there because it's more like a nickname like if we are around other black people and one black person is extra black. What do we call them? Black, midnight, dark boy, black boy, right? If a woman is black and she is light skinned, what do we call her? Oh, she's a yellow bone or a red bone. They can be interchangeable depending on the, the hue or how you want to use it. If a female is chocolate, she's dark. What do you call it? Oh, that oh, dark chocolate right there, boy. Oh, look at that chocolate there. You see what I'm saying? So this is, 
like a nickname. And it wasn't used in a bad way. So now we go over here. Real fast. Let's see if I can zoom in so we can get a better view. Okay, I think that's good enough. You see it is uh what is it? Strong's I'm trying to see so y'all can see it. Okay. G three five two X two six, excuse me. Niger. Niger. It only appears translated one time in this context. Now it appears other places, but this specifically. There's a reason for that. So it tells you that it means black. Surname of the prophet Simeon. And it says he was a Christian. How do we know he was a Christian? Because we just read the scriptures where it spoke about where the term Christian came up at. Now, if we go up and we listen to it, you can already see it. How is it actually pronounced? You ready? Strong's G, 3526, Niger, Niger. Let me turn my speakers up. Strong's G, 3526, Niger, Niger. So it's not pronounced Niger. Now it can be Niger, but according to the pronunciation coming from the Latin, it's Niger. So the so Simon the nigger, Simon the Simon the black boy. He was extra black, extra crispy. It was more of a nickname. And we and we know this. Well, I tell y'all, depending on the perspective you're reading the Bible from or seeing it from, you will see these things. Now, if we jump over here. It says black, a surname of Simeon, which is a Hebrew name. He was probably, <laughs> he was probably so called from his dark complexion. I know, this is, this is why I say you got to be careful. Because they say stuff like that. Why well, you need the spirit. He was probably, we know that he was black. It, it's, it, literally, it doesn't say Niger, it says nigger. He was a dark complexion, an extra dark complexion. We know that, we understand these things, but some people don't. They'd be like, oh, you know, this is one black person. No, 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 no. Now, let's go over here. And since we're on it, let's um, see what it tells us. Oh, so my computer wants to move slow while I'm working. Look at this, terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> so we see where it says Christians, right? That's what we read in Acts chapter 11. So let's go with the term Christian. These nigger, these nigger Christians. <laughs> so when I'm saying nigger, the basis of the base, I'm biblical with it. So Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuades me to be a Christian. Almost thou persuades me to be a, what? A Christian. He said almost thou persuades me to be a Hebrew because he couldn't be a Hebrew if he wasn't a physical Hebrew. But he could be a Christian. If any man suffer as a Christian, who is this? Who is speaking is Peter. The same person we just read about, Peter. Peter saying, if any man suffer as a Christian, he's a Hebrew. Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. On what behalf? They suffering as a Hebrew? No. They suffering as a Gentile? No. That he's suffering as a Christian. 
I think we just exposed a over probably a million people. We exposed right there. I guarantee we just exposed over a million people. So let's jump over here. And let's look and see what it tells us. Y'all know we already did this before, but it's been a while. Let's zoom that in a little bit so we can get a better view. The 175. Christian, a believer in and a follower of Christ, professing the Christian religion, received into the Christian church. And it even gives you the scripture. So, as I told y'all before, and I showed you this many, many times, there's nothing I'm making up. People are just, they piss me off. I know if I'm pissed off, I know God is pissed off. It consists of the I-A-N. So what you do, you take the Christ out. That's why I study this stuff. So it exposes these people that they are liars. It said it is a variant of suffix A-N with a little dash in the front. All right? Originally was from the stem of the word being attached, but later became, but later came to be felt as connective. So it's telling you that it comes from this. All we do is follow the trail because everything is connected. So it tells us word forming element, meaning pertaining to. So Christian means pertaining to Christ. Pertaining to Christ. Dealing with Christ. But you have American pertaining to America, African pertaining to Africa. So pertaining to being a believer in and a follower of Christ, pertaining to professing the Christian religion. Christ didn't teach no Judaism with no whole time and all this other stuff. The whole Bible is about Christ. We're not talking about Eurocentric, and if you talk about Eurocentric Christianity, the Europeans at that time period were Hebrews. That's who America rebelled against. <laughs> so we got to be careful when even saying that. What Europeans are you talking about? We're not talking about this uh, Hellenistic, this heathen Christ. This heathen Christianity. We're talking about biblical Christianity. So, there you have it. Niggas or niggers. Niggers, niggers, niggers everywhere in the Bible. And you also got niggers. Niggers, niggers everywhere in the Bible. And I see a whole, I see more niggers than I see niggers. In the Bible. So with that being said, God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus Christ's name, as always, stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, the truth is not debated. It is declared. I ain't telling you to go around and just be saying it just to say it. Go, oh, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. I'm, I'm going to say it. No, it needs to be context with it. It needs to have a purpose. That's why when I say it, it has a purpose. And then I explain myself because I know there are some people that have maybe not heard me say that. And they're like, oh, whoa, 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 what's going on? So you go back and watch the lessons and you understand or you could just ask me. So we out. <laughs>
foul. 